Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Treading Warm Water, a proud part of the Bethel Clarion Podcast Network. Josh Towner loves it when I say that. Um, today, I'm joined by Braden Peterson, Josh Towner, and Sam Johnson. Um, we saved the best for last in this recording session. Uh, Josh Towner, go ahead. Fortnite is good. Oh, that's yeah. just horrible. I just said it. Fortnite is oh. good. And I can think of a plethora of reasons why. First of all, the reason I got into Fortnite was just by word of mouth. And I love when there's a word of mouth, like cultural thing like that, whether it's a movie or a video game or a book going around. Like you think of like the movie Get Out. I never once saw a trailer for it. And then suddenly it's a cultural phenomenon just because of people talking about it. The same thing happened to me with Fortnite here is where I got back to my dorm one day and somebody's like, hey, have you seen this new Fortnite game? I was like, no, I haven't. Suddenly we're playing it. Now, I personally have not played Fortnite in well over a year now. I stopped enjoying the actual physical gameplay of it long before that, when people started just build battling instead of just shooting at each other. Um, that's why that's why games like Warzone from Call of Duty are much more my speed because you don't have to build anything. But we would not have Warzone if it had not been for Fortnite. And that's why I would consider Fortnite good, is because it was an essential building block and making games free to play and also making games cross-platform. So when I jump on Warzone, last night Joe and I played, but a couple nights before that, I, a PlayStation user, was playing with people on Xbox. And I have played with people who are using PC. And if it had not been for Fortnite, I would not have been able to cross play with my friends on a game that was free for all of us. So that is why I say that Fortnite is good. See, I think I think you're giving too much credit to Fortnite. So um, gross. I think when I think of Fortnite, I think of two roommates I've had in the past who played Fortnite until like 3 a.m. in the morning consistently. And Sam can Sam can attest to that because we, we shared the roommate. Shout out Russell Spacey. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I think when I think Fortnite, I think sleeping in a very, very small apartment with thin walls and somebody yelling, oh my gosh, how did you kill me? Um, and I don't think necessarily like the positives. I see your point that like, hey, it might be good um, because it's like opening up to, you know, consoles, allowing other consoles to play with each other and things like that. But I think you're giving too much credit to it. I really do. I'd have to agree on you with that one. Um, I myself bought into the big hype back when it was about our sophomore year, I would say. Um, I enjoyed it before it got super competitive, I would say, because you know there's, there's a season system to the game, and they're on like whatever, 20-something now. Um, I stopped playing it as soon or as early as season three mainly because of how competitive it got. Um, it used to be kind of just a fun game you could play, I think, with your friends. Um, and I mean, I, I think in another fact that you brought up, we say it pioneered crossplay, which I think it did uh, for a lot of console games. But I would say, like, I, when I think of stuff like that, I actually think of the, the big one. My, I think of, like, Minecraft or uh, games that came before uh, Fortnite. There's other ones that have been around, such as... Um, this uh, H1Z1 uh, game that was a sim. It was a very similar type game, um, and just a bunch of other games before it. But I think now it's become a culture that's almost. I, I honestly cringe whenever I think of Fortnite because I think of Ninja. Um, I think of little kids screaming, jumping off the battle bus, um, and they've just changed so much to it that I. That doesn't really make it as good as it used to be in early stages. Sam, what's your point? Uh, well, I guess overall I should say I've never really been a huge gamer, if I could use that term with this. I mean, it seems like this... Josh does make a good point that it does. It seems like it transcends a lot of uh, age demographics and maybe a, a cultural phenomena. I think that definitely applies but to call it like good i think is a very uh loose term maybe how you define good or what you like envision the game doing because i've i've never played it i have the same experience with joe of our roommate um russ um uh, love the guy when we lived in new york in the fall um he would 
he would play that thing till three thirty, four o'clock even some mornings. And and there'd be some nights where I'd hear him just screaming. I mean, we had a thin wall too, and he would just be screaming at something. We'd have to tap on the wall because he was so into the game. And there's millions of kids out there like that. So the impact is probably uh it it's, it's maybe more important than the game itself because I I've I don't really know if there's like a specific and, and you guys can help me out here because I don't know gaming history, but if there's a game that has like you talk, talked about cross, cross platform, Josh, but if there's a game that's been that kind of influential in recent history um, to so many different ages and and people were kind of like it seems fad and like for my like my parents have now heard of it where they've seemingly never heard of a video game before. I don't know if there's there's got to be something like that, but. I think I think the closest game to that is Minecraft, and I think what was really big was first move console Minecraft. from PC, um, and I think a lot of you know PC games kind of followed that, and a lot of console games followed the reverse of that, going to PC. Uh, Josh, what do you think? I very quickly want to throw back. I know you two lived in New York. I too actually lived in New York for a whole semester. York. No way. But the difference for me was Whoa. that when I was in New York, I didn't have like an annoying roommate who would stay up until late in the night playing video games. I was that roommate. And the reason I would do that is because that was the way I kept in touch with my friends from back home. It was by playing video games, primarily by playing Fortnite, because I could play it on my laptop and I could go back to my friends who were living in Illinois or in Indiana playing Fortnite on their PS4s and we could all get together and we could play and we could game together. Um, <clears throat> I want to look at this. So that, that's, that's my side of the New York thing. I want to look at also um, what Braden said about other video games. Obviously, Fortnite didn't pioneer the Battle Royale type game mode. Um, I know you mentioned H1Z1, which had its very popular run from a much smaller developer. Um, I know like Arma 3 is another um, kind of popular PC game that has a battle royale option. But I think it's Fortnite that popularized that message, that, that message, that method of play. And I know there are other games that have been cross-platform. When I played Minecraft when I was in middle school and early in high school, I would play it on my friend's Xbox and there wasn't cross-platform. So even though if I had it on my PS4, I wouldn't be able to play it with him on his Xbox. Um, the closest game I can think to that was cross-platform in that time was probably Rocket League. And uh, that game wasn't as widely popular. I know it's still a popular game now, and I still have some friends that play that regularly, but um, I can't think of a game that would have, was as transcendent and as like enormous in terms of popularity that brought um, not just the Battle Royale game type, but free-to-play and cross-platform very clearly into the mainstream. And that's that's what Fortnite did. And so even though I don't enjoy playing it, that's what I, I, I give Fortnite that credit. And I say that Fortnite is good because of that. Mm. So Josh, it's it's when you say good, is that more referring to the impact versus the game itself? Because that's what, when you were talking in your, in your opening statements, that it sounded like you haven't played in a year. So when you say good, it kind of made me think, do you think the game itself is is good, or are you just talking about the impact that it's had on the gaming community, like as a whole? I would I would be talking more of the impact. I think at first the gameplay was very good. It was very fun to play. It was engaging. It didn't have too high of a learning curve at first, but now the learning curve is way too high. And obviously, that happens in most games. Um, as, as they start to have a longer lifetime, this is what year three, I think of Fortnite being in the forefront. And I mean, it's still, it's probably, if I looked on like twitch.tv right now, it's probably a top four game in terms of total viewers on that website right now. Um, so it is still popular and I, I understand that people still enjoy it. I no longer enjoy playing it. So my definition of Fortnite being good is almost entirely on the impact of it and then some of those memories of playing with my friends in the earlier stages of that game's development. Got it. I think it's interesting. I think it's a, um, when I think Fortnite, I think little kids flossing. And uh, <laughs> I know Josh Towner is a huge advocate of the floss, the floss dance. Um, 
but I, I just, yeah, I think when I think of it, I think annoying. I think going to work, I work at Apple. I think little kids coming and asking me, do you have Fortnite on this iPad? And I think that irritates me. Um, I don't, I understand like it's had some positive things, but I think the negatives in this case outweigh the positives, um, especially with that blue haired guy. That's always for some reason crying and yelling and cursing at little kids that are cursing at him about how he's going to tell their parents. Um, yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's done a lot, and it's it's advanced e games and esports specifically um, because now people are more widely accepting esports, um, which I think is a is a cool thing. Uh, but overall, I would I would disagree with this take. I, I don't think it's a good. I think it's the the negatives far outweigh the positives. I want to key in on the negatives. So the negatives you have right now are little kids coming up to you in the Apple Store, and you don't like Ninja, who's a video game streamer whose popularity is. I wouldn't say rapidly declining, but is declining. Um, are, are those your negatives? I know you guys listed off like your your roommate in New York would shout at three in the morning when he was playing, but I think that's more of a symptom of video games in general. That's extreme, but um, yeah. <laughs> but what are what are some other negatives, Braden? I'd like to hear you chime in on this too. Yeah, I've let I've been letting it marinate. I've been thinking a little bit. Um, I think when you say in like as a social um, impact, how people kind of came together through this cross play aspect was big. Um, however, that was just a fad, like most of these are. Um, I know obviously uh, battle rails are still big with Warzone and even with games like Apex. Um, but I think I, I honestly like when I thought of like the I didn't I initially didn't get into Fortnite because. I thought it was a very annoying game just for the culture aspect. And uh, when people played it, um, I just didn't see any fun in having to repeat games with over like 100 people in it or 50, whatnot. Um, I just, I don't know. And I mean, it was free, which was nice. But I think, I don't know. I think in terms of like quality at the time and such, I think that's what... Maybe question if that makes sense. I don't know. I, I would like to just to respond to the <clears throat> the popularity calling it a fad. I did end up pulling up Twitch.tv, and it is the number three game right now with over two hundred thirty five thousand viewers, two hundred thirty five thousand people watching Fortnite, watching someone else play this video game on Twitch right now. Um, so I don't. I don't necessarily think I would call it a fad. If it burned out faster, um, maybe I'm trying to think of another comparable game that burned out fast that had a lot of popularity at first. I think H1Z1 peaked really quickly and then fell off, but I think Fortnite peaked quickly and has remained at that peak, even if its popularity is decreasing and the number of players, like especially I feel like in our age group, don't really play the game very much anymore. Uh, I would say it's still here and it's still popular. Yeah, I mean, I think you have a lot of points. Um, I think we should we should go around the table and see where everybody's sitting. Uh, I myself, I understand you have a lot of positive points, but I still think the negatives far outweigh the positives. So much so that I've sat forward in my chair. I'm no longer sitting back, so that's why the angle has changed of my camera. Um, Braden, where are you at? Game's trash. Fair enough, Sam. Yeah, I'm not I'm not a super big fan of the game, I guess, um, but I respect its impact it's had on, on a lot of kids. That, that, to me, is the most evident thing I've seen. Towner, go ahead and wrap us up. Uh, first of all, Joe, you keep naming these negatives other than little kids at the Apple Store in Tyler Blevins, who is known as Ninja. Uh, I, I'm not finding any tangible negatives in your argument. Um, I would like to actually close with an anecdote of uh, a very happy moment in my life that Fortnite brought to me um, that doesn't even involve looking at a screen or at a TV show or anything like that or watching a Twitch stream. I, uh, I think last summer or the summer before went to Target Field to catch a Twins game and it started pouring rain. And so the game, before it even started, we got put on rain delay for an hour and a half or two hours. And me and Jared Martinson sat there waiting for it and one of the good things that came from that is that they just put on like a never-ending dance cam 
and slowly in one of the upper decks uh, off, off to my right from where I was sitting. I don't even remember where I was sitting. It was in the nosebleeds though. Um, a herd of children started amassing and it was like, there were a bunch of T-ball teams or little league teams that were at this game. And this herd of at least 50, probably more children all in their baseball jerseys start to amass in one section of the bleachers up there. And they all in unison started flossing. And it was as cringy as it was, it was one of the funniest things that ever happened. And I will never forget that moment. I just have Fortnite to thank for that. Even if I don't enjoy playing the game, I, I have to respect what it's done. So that'll do it for this episode and this series of episodes for Treading Warm Water. Uh, I'm Joe Heady alongside Josh Tyner, Sam Johnson, and Braden Peterson. We'll catch you guys in the next one.